Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down how to create this trippy freeze frame transition. We're going to be using a few distort effects in order to create this transition, and it's going to look really smooth and really dope. So let's get right into it. Here in After Effects, I have these two clips of Sofago from his music video. And when it comes to freeze frame transitions, you always want to focus on the layer that you're transitioning into, or the second layer in my case. We're going to make sure that we're on the first frame of the second layer, and then duplicate this layer by clicking Control D. And I'm sure some of you guys know, but when it comes to these freeze frame transitions, we want to make sure that we have a still image of our subject. So after duplicating this layer, you want to right click it, go to time, and then click freeze frame. So what that does is freeze frame that first frame of the second layer. So now it's just a still image and I want this to look really smooth. So I'm going to make this layer 12 frames long. If you hold the shift button on your keyboard, click page down, that goes forward 10 frames and then click page down twice. And that is 12 frames long. Click control shift D in order to cut that layer. The next thing we're going to do is grab this layer, bring it back 12 frames so that it's overlapping with the layer from before. And what I'm going to do is just solo this layer, grab the pen tool and mask out my subject. After masking out your subject, you want to click your layer and click M twice in order to open up the settings, increase the feather to 3, and then decrease the mask expansion to negative 3, just so that we can have smoother edges for our subject. As you guys can see, by doing that, it just creates smoother edges. Now the first effect we're going to add to this layer is a glow. Increase the glow radius to 85. I'm also going to increase the glow intensity. I'm going to have that really intense, so I'm going to increase that to like 25. And we're going to keyframe that at the start for the glow intensity. Open up those keyframes, go towards the end, and keyframe the glow intensity back to zero. The next effect we're going to add is a turbulent displace. Change the displacement to turbulent smoother. Increase the amount to around 400. Decrease the size to 50. So by doing that, it creates that really distorted look. Of course, you can always just adjust these settings according to the look that you're going for. But in my case, I'm just going to decrease this to 50. Keyframe both the amount and the size at the start. And we're going to go towards the end or one frame before the end. Keyframe the size to 100. And then keyframe the amount to zero. Grab these two keyframes and bring it towards the end. By doing that, it just creates an animation for our distorted effect. In order to actually animate our subject in, we're going to add an effect called CC Scale Wipe. For this effect, I'm going to change the direction to zero because I want our layer to animate vertically. Now, in order to actually animate our subject in, I'm going to decrease the stretch because I want it to animate from the bottom up. Decrease that to like 30.70, negative 30.70. For the center, you want to focus on the Y value. So every time I move this, it animates our subject. So I'm going to extend that or I'm going to drag that up so that it animates from the bottom up. I'm going to decrease the Y value to negative 20 because I want this freeze frame layer to be visible at the start rather than if I were to like decrease this to negative 100, you wouldn't be able to see it. So I feel like negative 20 would be good enough. And we're going to keyframe the stretch as well as the center at the start and then go forward 12 frames, keyframe the stretch back to zero. And we're going to keyframe this Y value back to its original value. 540. That puts the anchor point of this effect right at the center. Grab all these keyframes and easy ease them. Then I'm going to unsell my layer. And now when I play this, we have that trippy distort effect for our freeze frame layer. Now we're going to focus on the second layer that it actually transitions into. So for this second layer, we're going to add a displacement map. For this effect, because our freeze frame layer is going to be animating vertically, I'm going to focus on the max vertical displacement. And if I were to increase this, it creates that really trippy type of look. So I'm going to increase this to around 750 and then change the horizontal displacement to zero. Keyframe the max vertical displacement at the start. Go forward at 12 frames. Keyframe that back to zero. And then we're going to add a glow. Increase the glow radius to 50. Go to the start of the layer and I'm going to increase the glow intensity to two. Keyframe that at the start and then go forward 12 frames. Keyframe that back to zero. Now when I play this, you're going to notice that we have transparency for our background because of the displacement map effect. You want to make sure you select this wrap pixels around and by doing that it just gets rid of the transparency. Grab all these keyframes, easy ease them. Now when I play this, we have that really trippy effect 
And to make it look even better, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. We're going to create a flash blur effect in order to make this transition look even better. Make this adjustment layer six frames long. Make sure to have the adjustment layer right at the center so that we have three frames on the left and then three frames on the right. The first effect we're going to add is a directional blur. Increase the blur length to around 90. Keyframe that right at the center and then we're going to keyframe it both the start as well as the end at zero. By adding this effect, it also creates transparency at the top edge as well as the bottom edge. So we're going to add a motion tile. Make sure you have the motion tile effect at the top right above the directional blur. Increase the output height to 200. Click mirror edges. Then we're going to add an exposure. Keyframe the exposure at the center to 2.5 and then keyframe the start as well as the end at zero. Easy ease all of these keyframes. This is what we have for our final transition definitely feel like the flash blur effect makes the transition look a lot better. That's all I have for this video. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.